Hello Monster Gardeners and welcome back to the Test Lab. I'm your host Dr. Watt and if you watch the Season 2 opener you'll be expecting to see the Spectrum King test around about now. Sadly, I'm afraid you've got to wait one more episode. This is because our brand new tent setup threw us one last curveball. The power system. As mentioned in the last episode, the Spectrum King test was waiting on the installation of a new 240 volt line to replace the one we melted down last year. But upon completion of the line and installation of our new autopilot and multimeter setup, we started hanging the Spectrum Kings and discovered that our 240 volt line wasn't in fact a 240 volt line. The fixtures would only pull between 205 and 215 volts, depending on the time of day, and I was left a bit stumped. You see, although I have a 16 year background in electrical engineering industries, it was all in the field of microelectronics, where voltages are measured in micro or nanovolts, not mains current. And so I needed help, which came in the form of Brendan Strath from Spectrum King. I'll spare you a full transcript of the lengthy conversation we had Get your nickel, start talking and give you a synopsis of it instead. The electrical grid in the United States is a complete mess. Brendan told me stories of coming across voltages ranging from 90 to well over 600 volts. Now currently in the US there are numerous electrical network layouts and systems depending on where you live. Then there's all the different voltages that can be found. Why line to neutral systems come with voltages over 120, 230, 240, 277 and 347 volts. Whereas Y or Delta line to line voltage systems come in 208, 240, 400, 415, 480 and 600 volts and above. Now, if that's not confusing enough for you, there are also different types of alternating current delivery. Single and split phase, which are most common in residential systems, and three phase, which is more commonly found in commercial systems that need more stable power delivery. Unlike the sprawling mess that is the US electrical grid, much of the world's electrical grid infrastructure is fairly standardized, but not here in America. Why is that? Brendan's advice was to take a look back through history. The Second World War was so destructive that at its conclusion most of the world's electrical grids had been pummeled to dust and so were all rebuilt at roughly the same time and to similar standards. But here in the US the electrical grid never got bombed. It's simply been evolving, replacing parts when they fail but never the whole thing. This means that some of America's electrical grid infrastructure could well be very old indeed. And as the saying goes, a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. Although there are a large array of electrical systems currently being used across the USA, that doesn't mean there aren't some common types. 
For instance, most residences use a split phase three wire system with dual 120 and 240 volt capabilities. The bulk of shops and commercial facilities use a three phase four wire wire system with dual 120 and 208 voltages. And large industry generally uses three phase three wire delta configurations with the most common system voltage being 480 volts. Now when we first started the test lab, we were told by the building management that we had a 240 volt line upstairs along with a 208 volt line downstairs at a fixture testing station deep in the bowels of the warehouse. And so I had assumed this to be the case, which would mean our electrical system was a less common three phase four wire delta system with voltages of 120, 208 and 240. But after testing every single socket in our building, we discovered we must be on a more common three phase four wire Y with only 120 and 208 volt capability. From the perspective of our test results, it doesn't actually mean all that much as all the tests have still been carried out on the same line. It's just it's 208 volts instead of 240. However, our own problems highlighted the challenges you growers face across the country when it comes to your electrical supply and prompted us to swap the Spectrum King test with Episode 3's planned DEHPS test. The reason for this is simple paranoia. I want to recheck everything before tackling the Spectrum Kings, mainly because I have far more experience testing DEHPS lamps than I do LED fixtures. Plus, we all wanted to make sure everything was working according to specs. If you're a regular viewer of the Monster Gardens channel, I invite you to cast your mind back to the fourth installment of What's In Store, where Dylan introduced the recently launched DEHPS offering from a new player in grow lighting, Illuminar. That's the main reason for this test. Soon after the Illuminar showed up, a similar fixture from Extra Sun hit our shelves and both bear more than a passing resemblance to one of the industry's first DEHPS fixtures, the Gavita Pro. Now, as soon as you start looking at all three side by side in detail, you can see lots of major differences, which I'm sure carry through to the internal electronics. But at first glance, they do look very similar. And that's not all that surprising, really. It's down to the fixed design layout of any one-piece DEHPS system. There's not much that companies can do with the external design to differentiate themselves. But who gives a crap about that? you should be more concerned with how well they perform. And I wanted to see if either of these new fixtures could live with the Gavita, as it's the backbone of so many commercial indoor farms all over the world. The test itself is simple. We'll be using our 25 spot canopy test in our 10x5 tent at the same 36 inch height we've tested all previous one piece DEHPS 1000 watt fixtures. Each fixture will be using the same bulb that it's supplied with and we'll be recording all of the usual measurements plus of course all of the usual conditions data as we supplied in all of the season one tests. This is so you can skip back to older episodes and compare this test to previous tests as well. Results, the first thing I'm very thankful to point out is that the test ran very smoothly with no hiccups and the new side station setup cut the actual test time by almost 75%. Suddenly the months of hard graft needed to build this new tent was all worthwhile. But what results did we get? Very interesting ones is the answer. First up is the Gavita, because really this is the target everyone's aiming at. 
From an output perspective, it beat the classic Pro version we tested in 2015 by a small margin, but other than that it performed exactly as expected, which leaves a pretty high bar for the newbies to overcome. Next we move on to the Extra Sun. It was actually the first time I'd gotten my hands on one so I wasn't sure what to expect. The main physical differences on the Extra Sun are in the reflector and the support arm, which are very different in design to the two other reflectors, which look more alike. However, despite the Extra Sun having the most intense center spot of the three, the rest of the canopy readings don't keep up, leaving its canopy average trailing the Gavita by almost 30 micromoles of PPFD on average. This is also reflected in the uniformity ratio. But having said that, the Gavita is of course a good chunk more expensive. So I'd guess the Extra Sun is being positioned a little lower in the lighting hierarchy. And so, finally we come to the Illuminar. In all honesty, I had no idea what to expect from this fixture, as not much is known about this new player. So let's just let the numbers do the talking, shall we? As with the Extra Sun, there are key differences between the Gavita and this new Illuminar mainly in the reflector retention system and the supporting arm. The reflector itself also looked just a little bit different in its shape. You have to look closely to see it in profile, but experience has taught me to look for details like this. Reflector design is especially critical to these one-piece type fixtures because they've been designed for greenhouse applications and so are very compact in order not to create shadows when not in use. This means they simply don't have the same reflective surface area of something like a Radiant DE hood. So how does it stack up to the Gavita? The answer is very well indeed. Despite not having the most intense center spot, it beats the Gavita outright in average canopy by some 15 micromoles of PPFD. Looking at the heat map, it's clear to see why. Instead of having a central hot reading, the Illuminar reflector has its most intense reading spread out in spots 8 and 18 meaning it does a better job of spreading its intensity and minimizing the hot spots on your canopy, which should be better for anything grown under them. This test confirms in my eyes that we may be entering a new phase of development in the grow lighting industry. Finally, smaller players are catching up to the lighting giants, at least in initial testing, because of course, the real test comes over time. Both the Illuminar and Extra Sun are too new to predict how they'll behave over the course of two or three years of use. But, at least for now, the signs are extremely encouraging. So, congrats to the Illuminar on its rookie showing. I'm looking forward to seeing how this new player develops and what's next from them, as this initial showing has certainly made us sit up and pay attention. Well, that's it for this episode of Test Lab. I'm off now to start furiously testing the Spectrum Kings on our 208 volt line. But before I go, I'd just like to say a word of thanks to Brendan over at Spectrum King for all his help over the last nine months in getting to the heart of our electrical mysteries and problems. But don't forget to also follow us on Facebook or Instagram and subscribe to the YouTube channel. But for now, my name's Dr. Watt and I'll see you next time on Test Lab. <laughs>